My name is Ferry Blosh. Hey, I'm Gage Nobles. So my name is Trace, Trace Johns. Uh, from Mobile, Alabama, and we currently operate around the Mobile Bay area in both Mobile and Baldwin County. And uh, I blow glass because it's like nothing I ever saw before I ever worked with it. And uh, it immediately drew me in. And uh, after that first semester, I took glass blowing as an elective. I knew that I was gonna do this the rest of my life. I started in 2013, I was 20 years old. So, um, been blowing glass since Friday started, we started together, so. So we've been friends for ever. Trace Johns, brother from another mother. His work is some of the, I don't wanna, you know, like, Trace Johns is the best sculptor I've ever seen, but I love his work. Like, he really makes some incredible pieces in glass, and he tries to, he's trying to make it not look like glass, or he's not trying to make a glass piece like any other glass piece you've ever seen. Because you think of glass as being this fragile, like, don't touch it, don't, don't be mean to it, you know, like, don't, don't even look at it you know, cause it'll break. And he's just like, no, let's hammer it. Let's take knives to it. Let's beat it around. Let's scribble on it. He paints on it. He, you know, I love everything he does. As long as muffin jaw has been a thing, I've been around sometimes more hands-on than not, but been here, man. I studied at the University of South Alabama, and then I did a two-year apprenticeship at Augusta Glass Studio in Augusta, Missouri under Kaiko Mahata and Sam Stang. Uh, started blowing glass at South in the fall of 2013. Uh, and like I said earlier, I just took it as an elective and didn't really know what I was wanting to do with my life at that time. I, I kind of had this idea that I was gonna be a rock star and I was really learning, like that was never gonna happen. I just kind of stumbled into it. I was working a job and my manager mentioned that South had a glass blowing class and I didn't really know that that was a thing. I didn't understand what glass blowing was even. I thought it was torch working. Um, you know, so the first day I walk into class, uh, me and my buddy Trace, he, and I sat behind the torches because we were like, we want to be first up. Like we want to be the first ones that are working with glass in this class. And after the teacher introduces himself and explains the course, he's like, all right, let's go out to the hot shop. And then he shows us the furnace. And it was, you know, one, it was like pulled the rug underneath us. And two, we're like, this is not what we signed up for. And I don't know, it was just like, we, we, weren't, really, we weren't really hooked at first. We were always trying to get on the torch. We always went back to the torch whenever we had free time because it was a really big class. Like your intro class is what makes it apartment. It really like, you have all these people are trying it for the first time and you either fall in love with it or you want nothing to do with it. <laughs> so uh, we kind of were like, we were hanging out, like we we're finishing out the semester. We definitely weren't gonna quit. Most people don't have that kind of opportunity to work in a shop and have open access to it. Like, if there's free time, just come on in and work. And especially with glass, that was insane, you know. It started out on just a whim. Like we had watched, like we'd been into glass, seen, we didn't even know what we were getting into. We first started, we were getting into lamp working from watching like just documentaries and stuff. We found out that's what it wasn't what we were doing. And then from there it was just winging it, trying to make the best we could do, being so proud of just nothing little caterpillars to sharing stuff just to make grades and stuff sounds kind of bad but we had fun the whole time it wasn't like anything terrible to giving all our color back to the teacher because we didn't think we were going to continue thought we were gonna have to go back to the real world we were bouncing around school at that time that was a blur we were anthropologists teachers scientists doctors poets we were true scholars back then. And then just over the summer, we decided never go back to the real world. 
text Trace. I was like, dude, we gotta go back. Like, I, I don't see myself doing anything else. Like, th this is it. Um, so the next semester, we both had a meeting with our professor, Matthew Patterson. And we're like, hey, we're glass blowers now. Like, what do we gotta do? And he's like, all right, like, you know, cause not too many, out of a class of 14, I think there were four returning students. And we were the only two from that class that decided to be actual glass majors. The other two weren't glass majors. They were just gonna do it cause they wanted to do it. Cause it just, I mean, it, it captures you. You know, if you get bit by the glass bug, you're never gonna get away from it. I met Freddie up at South Alabama in college. We uh, took the same elective, kind of, kind of found glass blowing the same way. We just thought it was gonna be something different. And once we got there, we found just a whole new craft that we didn't really know existed, and fell in love with it. And he. From the start, from the beginning, he was a hard worker and he wanted to be a glass blower. That was, that was my guy to hang around if I wanted to be a glass blower. When Gage is there, Gage shows up and he shows out and he does it every time and he's on it. The only time I've ever seen him really mess up is when he's suffering heat exhaustion and he's still going through it. One time we did a demo and he's like, hey, I think I might have swallowed some glass. You good? Yeah, I'm good. And he keeps on going. Like he just, he does not stop. But he's, he's the goblet maker. He's the goblet specialist, stemware specialist. He dedicated his entire glass blowing career to just making goblets, which is the most heartbreaking, <laughs> devastating, lowest success rate of any piece you can make in glass. And he's like, yeah, that's for me. You know, my goal is to make your favorite cup when you get done with work or like when you start your day, you're gonna grab the piece that I made and you're gonna, you know, take care of it, hopefully. <laughs> when it does break, it's okay because glass breaks. But um, it, there's just something about like making a, a function, you know, a, a piece that functions, a piece that serves a purpose. But, you know, aesthetically pleasing pieces are nice and I do make those, but it's really special to me when it can also, you know, help you or do something for you. That, that's my favorite thing to make. I, I actually, uh, I talked to a customer recently that they mentioned, oh yeah, we saw these guys blowing glass out at Redbeard's a few years back, and this happened a couple months ago. I was like, yeah, that was me. I'm the only person that's ever blown glass in that parking lot. So uh, that was another humbling experience to have this connection with people, whether they realize it or not. But yeah, like we, we were their first time that they had ever seen blown glass. They're like, they remember us. They don't, or they remember the glass. Yeah, and that's really what it's for. They remember the glass. We just happened to do it. Um, Mobile, Dolphin Island. Um, we've been downtown, Midtown, West Mobile. Um, Across the bay, we're on the Causeway in Spanish Fort. Uh, we've been in Fairhope. We're on Weeks Bay blowing glass. Um, I mentioned Dolphin Island. Yeah. Um, that was really cool. Um, I've blown glass in Pensacola, Florida. Took a couple workshops, and I've actually worked for some artists out there. And then I also worked in St. Petersburg for a glass art society conference when I was apprenticing. Uh, up in Missouri. Uh, and then I also blew glass in St. Louis. And then Washington, Missouri, when I was living there, we blew glass in our backyard at our rental house because we were getting ready for the, uh, the fair, the Washington Town and Country Fair that we got to blow glass for a demo there. Our live demos, we, it takes a lot of planning. We have to ensure that we have space that's safe for us to put our equipment and also safe for the viewers to be there so that they're not gonna get hurt, our equipment's not gonna get hurt. We get hurt, we, we burn ourselves, we cut ourselves, like, you know, it's not about us. Uh, our demos are mainly for the viewers, for the venue. We, we wanna, it's, you know, it's for the area. I'd never seen this before, so 
it's really humbling to be able to give somebody that first experience with hot glass. Or even like when someone's been around glass and I get to have that conversation, I get to nerd out. Well, where did you see glass? Where, like, who do you know? Where has this happened? So it's just, uh, it's too much fun. It's a whole lot of work, but if you love what you do, you know. Sometimes we're in there and it's like, look, we don't have a set schedule. We don't have an agenda. Like we don't have orders that we have to fill. Let's have fun. Let's experiment. Let's, let's try something that we never tried before. If we fail, we fail. And we just tell people this is the reality, you know? But to have that interaction with people, it's like, this might not work. This may work and it will be really cool if it does, but it probably won't. And they get to see our gears turning and see, you know, oh, okay, well that step didn't work. So let's take that out. Let's replace it with this. And we'll add to this, you know, that's why I like doing demos. I like to show people that, you know, this isn't, we're not machines making glass. We're not gonna just constantly pump out a perfect sellable profit, uh, product. We're human, we're, we make mistakes. We learn from our mistakes and we try to better ourselves from those mistakes. And then when, if something happened, if a piece is created without a hitch, even better, you know? but it, it's, uh, it's a really fun, it, it, it's, I don't want to talk about it too much because it, it, it's like, it's too heady. Like it's too, it's too ethereal. It's too, uh, you know, you, you can't explain it. Like you just have to see it. The whole reason we're doing these demos is because I cannot describe it to you. I cannot put it in words what it's like. You just have to see it. You just have to experience it. When you experience it, you'll know. But if, you know, I can talk about it till I'm blue in the face, it doesn't matter. Until you are actually there and you actually witness it. You know, that's what we're doing it for. Where all have you done demos at? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. I can't name all of them because there's been too many of them at this point for me to rack my brain to have every single one of them. I say there's been too many of them. There's gonna be so many more. Like we're not done. We have so many places that we haven't blown glass. That's the better question. Where do you want to blow glass next? I saw that they were doing this local music and arts festival. We had never taken our equipment out of the shop. And, but we were always told like from the beginning of us meeting Chuck and Phil at Mobile Glassbow, and they're like, this is what we do. We made these furnaces to be brought out into the public to share what we do because the majority of glass blowing is done behind closed doors. Everyday people that have never even, like they don't even know what this is, we get to show them, like we get to explain what it is and the visual explanation of, oh, well, this is what it looks like. This, if you stop moving, it's gonna drip down. So we're all, you know, our song and dance that we do when we're with people, you know, it could happen in the shop, but you're gonna faint from heat exhaustion, you know? You gotta pay people to come into a glass shop. <laughs> they don't, you don't wanna come into a shop that's gonna, you know, fry your brain. You wanna see it at a brewery or at an art festival or, you know, supporting a nonprofit. And when it when it's just this little like, oh, well, what's that going on over there? We've there, there's been so many times where it's like, are y'all cooking pizza? Are y'all distilling whiskey? You know, like because this is unlike anything you've most people have ever seen before.